So um, my talk is it's not like the other talk oriented to the present and to the future. It is just oriented to the past. Because <laughs> the information I had was just uh, yeah, uh, made a talk about zero knowledge, right? Made a very productive talk about zero knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but before starting, uh, about very fine proofs, I knew also something. Uh, which is derived from the work of Yuri Matyasevich uh, about the open time equation, which models uh, recursive and invariable sets. Because every uh, recursive and invariable set is a the open time set and can be defined by the open time equation. And uh, to be, so the relation A, the number A, codifies the proof of the theorem, which is the number B. This is recursively enumerable, and there are universal open time equations. And so uh, there was an old theorem, I think, by John, which was a collaborator of Matyasevich, telling that every mathematical theorem can be verified by less than 100 additions and multiplications. So every theorem can be verified in less than 1, 000, uh, 100 operations. The point is, that the operation was done with very huge, yeah, big integer. Because the proof uh, was codified in an integer, which was, of course, even bigger than uh, what Grigore said. Yeah? So the number of operations is small, but the time can be very large to make all the 100 computations which is big. But however, I think that the arithmetical circuit, which makes this kind of proof, it verifies the number, can encode the subset of some operations, and also uh, a logarithmic amount of the things he does in a proof which can be trusted with high probability and which is small. Yeah, but I don't think that I reach 256 uh, bits as you told. Uh, I will just have something which is uh, logarithmic in, in length. Yeah, I mean, you have a big proof, and I, I can make a verifier, a certificate uh, of truth with big probability, which is logarithmic in, in yeah. So uh, I cannot be, from my knowledge, I can reduce what we got enough. But okay, uh, let's start the here. Uh, so, uh, what is zero knowledge? The uh, consumer says he knows the secret, and in general, the secret will be written in red. And uh, he must convince Victor, which is, I don't know, someone from um, the secret service, um, who has to let her in in the secret service, but uh, he has not a level of clearance which is big enough, so he has not. Uh, Intent to entitle to know the secret to say he knows. So, uh, Peggy has to prove she knows the secret information without uh, revealing any bit of her information. This is the classical problem of zero knowledge. And the protocol has to run relatively fast because it is just uh, changing password at the door and uh, it has to be let in a minute or not uh, or to be rejected. And so we have to need to satisfy some completeness. Um, so if she really knows the proof of acceptance, uh, the probability of acceptance should be one. And if she doesn't know, then the probability of cheating should be relatively small and should be done eventually by repeating the protocol as small as we want before. So uh, I have just two parts, protocols and graphs, which, are, which have been historically the first uh, protocol. And then uh, arithmetic protocols, with me, which, which use the uh, uh, difficulty of the uh, discrete logarithm program. So uh, in graphs, uh, the first uh, problem which has been used is graph isomorphism, which is known to be difficult, but not, it is not known to be anti-complete. But if B is written from a given, it is somehow in the middle. So we have two known graphs, so they are blue. 
and uh, what unknown isomorphism, which is fresh, which is a secret to keep, but to convince another one about. And um, what uh, what Peggy does, she makes first a commitment, so also the called Hesic Sigma structure. Um, commitment, challenge, response, and eventually um, simulation, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, she, uh, she should be uh, one of the graphs, and she should be a new isomorphism, a new presentation of this graph, and she can compose and produce one new um, graph, H, with the sigma of this pi, and she publishes it. And now, uh, an example, three graphs with isomorphic from the trivial. However, uh, Victor gives a challenge, which is G, 0, and 1, because he, he doesn't know which graph has been used by Peggy to produce a new graph with a known isomorphism. And now uh, Peggy has to produce an isomorphism from this graph to her graph. And, and now uh, if Victor made a bad choice, I mean, uh, he uh, chose exactly the graph Peggy chose. So, of course, she has, uh, she has the isomorphism produced by herself, and this probability is one half. But with probability one half, she will choose the other graph. And she really has to know the secret phi in order to produce a new isomorphism. And uh, this happens, I mean, she can sit with probability one half, but uh, she can sit in a trial with probability one half to the power k, which becomes a smaller zero. Okay, so uh, just keep the stages, commitment, challenge, and report. There is also a simulator which can produce um, a commitment which is similar. I think this R is not always the same as, as, uh, as done by the, by the prover, but the problem is about the why do we want the simulator? Because uh, it produces a commitment such that this simple commitment challenge and response is not uh, computational, computationally distinguishable from the numbers which were in the protocol. And this is a kind of theoretical proof that uh, the process really has zero knowledge. But it doesn't work uh, without, without a guarantee that any problem is difficult, like you see logarithm or, or, or graphite or something. Is Peggy using the simulator to create no, a commitment? No, the chief, the chief of Victor uh, uses the simulator to, to, to check to that check. the protocol was okay. Yeah. Okay, now uh, about zero uh, knowledge in general, um, there is here uh, one example of result from the complexity theory, if one way functions exist in the sense of complexity theory, then uh, uh, zero knowledge provable uh, words or propositions or problems are the same as uh, interactive proof system provable uh, words. And so uh, CVK is very big, it's the same as this three phase. Uh, but I want to concentrate on another point here, the uh, colorability of graphs is in CVK, uh, assuming that a computationally hiding commitment still exists. And uh, I just said some words on this theorem one. Um, by first clarifying uh, what is a commitment, so a commitment which is here in uh, zero knowledge protocol, just a step, is a general notion in cryptography. Uh, and here is an example. Uh, Bob and Ellis uh, play uh, paper paper uh, stone over telephone, and they don't have video connection, they have just audio connection, let's say. Uh, so um, Bob, they, they choose for this round uh, a kind of hash function, R, which is known by Bob. Um, Bob uh, chooses some random number k, and uh, he decides to play Hizzard, so he encodes Hizzard concatenated with the number k. And he produced the hash function value. And he sends over the phone the hash function value. Alex says 
paper, and Bob uh, said, uh, look, I said scissors, and the proof is K. Now, Alice may compute R of scissors and K, and she found R, and she understood that uh, she was. Yeah? Okay. Now, uh, the pre image of R are hard to compute, so R is uh, resistant to the second pre image, it's resistant to collision, it's resistant to pre image. Uh, we can think about this. However, uh, the problem is that uh, for Bob, it's also difficult if Alice solves rock, it's also difficult for Bob to find a K prime such that scissors uh, and K make the same result as paper and paper. So, uh, um, this one way function R is difficult enough in order uh, that you are not able to falsify your commitment in the time you will have to wait. So, uh, we, can, we can use this link for uh, theorem one. So, how do we, do we make a protocol for three coloring? So, we have a graph and uh, uh, Psi is a secret coloring, so we know that the coloring exists and we have it. And uh, now um, for a round, we make the following thing. Um, we take, we make some random permutation pi of the first one to three, because when round repeats, uh, we don't want to give the real color of, of, of any edge, uh, of any vertex. Okay. So the function, uh, uh, pi of pi defines another three coloring because we just said with color. Um, and now uh, the prover commits, and for every such permuted color, he makes uh, some uh, random number and he publishes the value, the i, like in the game with paper and scissors. Uh, now the verifier selects a match. And the prover decommit, so to decommit means that you publish uh, the KI, the corresponding AI. Um, and the verifier can compute that, uh, can, uh, and, and you also uh, publish the values P of psi and I and P of psi and T. Uh, so the verifier checks that they are different. Yeah? Now, the probability uh, to cheat is. Um, one minus one over e because there is at most one edge you don't know the correct color but this is smaller than one so uh, again by repeating you can make this probability to cheat as small as someone wants in order to accept that you really know uh, uh, the color of the color so this is a little bit uh, difficult and unpractical but uh, i was insisting in the following thing, and uh, I didn't know that it was really relevant here. I was just preparing to talk about zero knowledge. The point is that finding a proof with bounded length is known to be anti complete. It is a so called problem called mathematics in anti complete problem. So the point is that if you choose some theory, as you told, Rasmus uh, White or something, yeah, uh, general of research, yeah. Uh, and uh, phi is a theorem, which is probably in L. And L is the bound of the length of the two phi. <coughs> um, okay, you can choose L much bigger as, the, as your proof, because uh, your enemy has not to know how long this of the proof is, yeah. Uh, for example, you prove. Uh, I don't know, Fermat's theorem. Um, and you know that the referee needs uh, 10 years to take your book. Uh, but you have to, you want to be at knowledge that you already do. So you, you want to convince people that you have the proof, but without, uh, without using price and the of your book. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's different from. Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, as it's known. And uh, but I thought you can 
safe and never which is much bigger. So uh, because your enemies uh, can be deceived by, by this action. Yeah. Uh, so um, because this is anti-complete light free coloring, you can translate this instance in an instance of free coloring. And so uh, it is possible to efficiently transform pi in a zero knowledge proof of pi. Uh, and uh, the proof represents set to a very file that with high probability the theorem has a proof of length smaller than n and that you know this proof. Yeah, you can. But as I already told, uh, here there is this, uh, this um, necessity to make it secret. It, it makes a big difference from the problem we talk. So the graph, the graph yeah. will be a function of pi or a function of pi? Uh, it's a function of s and pi. Uh, yeah, it's a function of s and pi. Yeah. No more than five. Five means following. So, so five, five is only the last line of five. Yeah. So you get five very easily by projecting uh, five on the last line. Yeah. No, it is huge. Yeah. No. 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 It's not a all <laughs> But uh, I, I'm just happy. Um, I, I knew just, uh, yeah, it's Bitcoin. It made something about uh, zero, um, zero knowledge. Yeah? And uh, I said, yeah, this is so theoretical, but okay, I like it, so I put it. And uh, it was a good, <laughs> good idea to put it. Yeah? Okay, now, uh, as already observed, um, those things are not practical. So let's talk about more practical protocols. The most practical protocols are uh, done over cyclic groups, uh, but not any cyclic group. Uh, cyclic groups, which are so that the logarithm, um, the discrete logarithm is difficult for. Yeah. So for an algebra, uh, the archetypical cyclic group is uh, Zn with addition of zero, so addition modulo n. Uh, but exactly in those groups, um which are cyclic because they are generated by every integer with relatively finally with n so exactly in those groups it is very easy to find the discrete logarithm because uh, you need uh, at most cubic time to compute uh, the modular inverse of g uh, by uh, euclid's extended algorithm and then and then uh, a multiplication which is at most quadratic, in fact, it is n log n, and you found the discrete logarithm. Yeah. So cryptography is much subtler than algebra because cryptography is about representation and not only about structure. Yeah. This is a this is a, a moral of the story. So um, we want groups which are cycling and have a cardinality, which is a prime number, but uh, in which the discrete logarithm is really hard and not in cubic time as here. Yeah? And uh, so instead, we take a prime Q. Uh, we find a prime, which is SQ plus one, of another prime P. This exists by Didier's theorem about arithmetic progression, which contains an infinity of primes. And now uh, we find an element x in fp, so uh, integers modulo p, such that uh, x to power s is not one, when s is exactly uh, p minus one over q. And now this element g has really order q in fp. So uh, him in fp, g uh, does really generate a cyclic group of order q. And uh, so computations are done modulo p, uh, and the discrete logarithm is more or less modulo q. I mean, it is it, it is about a group with few elements, uh, but it's very hard to compute indeed. So these are those cyclic like groups we speak about. And uh, um, uh, one really easy example is North's identification protocol. 
So uh, peg is fixed if the discrete log added x of y uh, to respect with respect to g. Uh, and uh, what she does? So um, the commitment is uh, she chooses a random k and publishes g power k. Uh, Victor publishes a challenge uh, e. I think this is here. What's the letter? Yeah. And um, she makes a response, which is case k plus x times e modulo q. And now the verification consists of computing g to the power of y to minus e and compare it with r. And it is a matter of one line to check that this works for a verification. And it is also a matter of one line to check that the probability of successful cheating is one over Q. So if you choose a big prime number Q, and uh, they speak about prime numbers with 128 uh, digits, binary digits, or 256 binary digits, and so on, then um, uh, it is really uh, difficult to cheat. And you have not to repeat this protocol. Yeah. However, if you repeat the protocol with the same commitment, this would be a very big mistake from the part of Peggy, uh, because by same commitment and different challenges, uh, one can very fast uh, find out the secret. Yeah. So, okay, repeat the protocol. But uh, make make every time um, a random challenge, yeah. And 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 even check that it is not the same. I mean, keep track of the of the games which took part in order to avoid this kind of accident of security. Okay. Uh, so the abstractization is now again um, R. Let be R the function which computes the commitment. T the challenge. Uh, F, uh, the function which computes the response. Uh, v of R, C, F, which are now published all the verification algorithm, and S prime the simulator algorithm. Now, uh, what is interesting in this simulator algorithm? The simulator algorithm is something worth of theoretical interest, but there are situations when people use it in order to generate other protocols, which are more complex. Um, and now I have still some examples. Um, uh, one example is when um, hmm? Of course, I, I told it, but uh, there is some I have an example here when we use the simulator uh, in order to generate a more complicated protocol from two simpler protocols. It can be, it can be, it has also a practical use. That's what I said. So, my examples now that we cannot really uh, a la profunda go deeper with. Uh, so, uh, I have um, these examples where two elements in two different groups with two elements have um, discrete logarithms which are known only by Peggy and which are equal and she has to prove not only that he knows the discrete logarithm of y1 modulo g and uh, y2 modulo h but also the fact that the logarithms are equal uh, in another example um, we have this kind of relation with two generators and uh, we have to prove knowledge of both discrete logarithm. In another example, we know uh, from two secrets, we know just one secret, and we have to prove that we know one of two secrets, but without giving price which of them we know. So this is a little bit like another protocol, which is called uh, Obdivius. Do you remember, Rago? Uh, Obdivius? Something, yeah. Okay, um, oblivious transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and here, 
here is a protocol which uses all sorts of simulator functions in order to be a, to make a bigger one. And I had also um, an example of um, how to prove a binary choice. Yeah. So here uh, it is about a secret vote for a referendum. So just just a binary choice like minus one and one, and you encode it in some things, and uh, you have to prove that um, you made a good choice. I mean that your choice is exactly in this setting and not something different. And this one is the most difficult here. Yeah, so I don't have the time um, to go deeper with one of them. So only if if you want it specially. Uh, yeah. Yeah, ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ask questions for so um, this is not my field, but I know that there are tricks, right? To take an interactive journalist protocol yeah. and turn it into a non interactive one, right? Because sometimes the verifier doesn't have the capability or the time or the resources to interact. Mm -hmm. Right. I think the prover can pick a challenge, hashing somehow, or the challenge is known and something like that. So yeah. where, where the verifier doesn't have to interact. And for us that's important. So uh, like the verifier doesn't have to the challenge mm. is somehow known automatically. Uh yeah, there are uh, I mean uh, they do it uh they do it here for the for the for this kind of secret vote system um they really encode a certificate in the vote they send out and uh, it has to be verified uh by chance if wanted by someone yeah if there is some some suspicion or, or something but uh yeah 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 but it uh, it goes with certificate without being automatically checked yeah uh but however uh the correctness of the whole vote is checked so they check that also this certificate is there and this that this is really the certificate that has to be there encoding of what to be but um the message of the certificate itself it's not automatically checked yeah 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 